Hey, welcome back to Kids Creek. You know, one of the many things that I've missed about not being here together is the games that we get to play in Kids Creek. So I thought I'd start off today with a game that we should all know how to play. Simon Says. So everybody stand up on your feet. <laughs> I got some of you already. Simon didn't say stand up on your feet. So you know how this works. If Simon says to do it, then you do it. If Simon doesn't say, then you don't do it. Now, I may need some adults out there to help me out by watching out to see if your kids are getting fooled or not. So, are you ready? All right, let's play. Simon says, stand up. Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, touch your shoulders. Simon says, pat your knees. Simon says, clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Oh, got a few of you out there. Simon didn't say to stomp your feet. All right. Simon says, stomp your feet. Simon says, stop. Simon says, rub your belly and say, mmm, mmm. Simon says, pat your shoulders. Simon says, touch your elbows. Oh, these are not your elbows. Got some of you out there on that one. These are your elbows. All right. Simon says, wave your hands in the air. Simon says, clap really loud. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right, you did a great job with that game. You know, we played Simon Says today because it goes right along with what we're learning in today's lesson. Today, many Christians know what the Bible teaches. They know what Jesus has commanded us to do, but they don't want to obey Him. Jesus addresses this problem in Luke chapter 6. He says to His followers a very important question. He asks, Why do you call me Lord, but don't do what I say? This is a tough question. Uh, basically, Jesus is asking, how can you say that you're my followers when you don't do what I tell you to do? Well, today we're going to look at that idea through the story of the wise builder and the foolish builder. But first, check out this video. Good morning, first graders. I'm your substitute teacher, Mr. Periwinkle. What happened to Mrs. Jones? Well, Miss Jones had to take some time off because she was having a baby, so I'm gonna be your substitute teacher for the next month or so. Now, to begin, let's start by talking about some of the rules. Okay, are we ready? What's a rule? Good question. A rule is a guideline that- What's a guideline? Okay, well- What's a well? Ooh, I know, I know. That's where water grows. No, that's not. I didn't know water grows. I thought it was angel tears. My grandma says I make angels cry when I slap my sister. Well, no, but, but true, you shouldn't hit your sister. My brother hits me sometimes, but then I just flush his sweaters down the toilet. Okay, let's refocus here. Rule number one, don't get out of your seat without asking. Can you all repeat that for me? That, that for me. me. No, you're supposed to say, don't get out of your seat without asking. Don't get out of your seat without asking. Much better. Much better. <sighs> Very funny. Uh, TJ, what are you doing? I'm going to the bathroom. But you just broke rule number one. You must stay in your seat. Don't you remember? I remember. I heard it. I just didn't want to do it. TJ, go back to your seat. You have to listen to the rules and follow them. But what if I have to go real bad? Well, then just ask. But what if I have to go potty really super bad and I can't hold it and I go all over the floor? Oh, we can put newspapers on the floor. Like for my grandma's chihuahua. <laughs> we call him Mr. Piddles. I'm not a chihuahua. <laughs> oh, okay, everybody, calm down. Okay, no one's gonna potty on the floor. If you need to go to the restroom, raise your hand and I'll let you go. All right, and this brings me to rule number two. Raise your hand if you need help. Okay, can you all repeat that with me? Raise, Raise your, your hand, hand if you need help. Hey, yo, Mr. Periwinkle, I can't find my scissors. Okay, Susan, you forgot to raise your hand. I'm from the Bronx. We don't raise our hands in the Bronx. Susan, you forgot to raise your hand. Okay, fine. I can't find my scissors. Susan, you need to wait for me to say you can talk and then you can talk. Why? Because that's the rule. Why? Because that's how we stay safe and in order. Why? Because 
Ah, I know what you're doing. Why? Okay, that's enough, Susan. Why? Look, we need to keep going over the rules. Why? <laughs> wow, these kids are really not wanting to obey what the teacher says. They don't realize the importance of the rules that the teacher is giving them. They heard the rules, they know them, but they don't want to obey them. You know, there are a lot of Christians who have the same problem. They know what the Bible teaches, they know what Jesus has commanded us to do, but they just don't want to obey Him. Jesus addressed this problem in Luke chapter 6. He asked His followers a very important question. He asked, Why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I say? This is a tough question. Basically, Jesus is asking, how can you say that you are my follower when you won't do what I say? Jesus was always asking tough questions of people. In this series, we are going to look at some of the big questions that Jesus asked. Today, you are going to learn from that big question He asked His disciples. Why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I say? We are going to learn how important it is not just to know Jesus' commands, but obey them. My name is Kayla, and I will see you next time when we learn more of Jesus' questions, questions, questions. <laughs>
He told this story right after he had asked today's big question, Why do you call me Lord, but do not do what I command? Jesus told of two men who planned to build a house. Now, if you've ever seen a house being built, you know that it's a very difficult thing to do. It requires a lot of preparation and planning. Jesus said that one of the men was wise and the other was foolish. Let's see if you can tell which was which. Let's read together from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. One man was searching for the perfect place to build his house. He found what he believed was the perfect spot. It was a large area with lots of solid ground. He felt that this would be a great spot to build his house, so that's exactly what he did. When he was done, he looked at his home that was built on solid rock, and he felt that it was good. One day there was a major storm that brought high winds and tons of rain down upon the house. It was a terrible storm, but do you know what? Even in the midst of the storm, this man's house stood strong on the solid foundation. Let's find out what happened with the other builder. Let's read together from Matthew chapter 7, verses 26 through 27. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. You see, the other man searched for the perfect spot to build his house. He found a spot that was a beautiful area covered in sand. He built his house on the sand and was very happy with how it turned out. Probably felt a lot like a beach house. But do you remember the storm that we talked about earlier? This same storm came upon the same house of the man who built it on the sand. The house didn't stand so well though. After all, he had failed to build his house on a solid foundation, but instead chose soft sand. When the rain and the winds came, they caused this house to begin to shift and to shake. And when the sun came up the next morning, this man's house was nothing more than a pile of rubble. Now, which one of these men do you think was the wise man that Jesus talked about? That's right. The wise man was the one who built his house on the solid foundation, the rock. Jesus said, the wise man is like a person who hears my commands and obeys them. The foolish man is like a person who hears my commands but does not obey them. Today in our lesson, we're going to learn that if we obey Jesus' commands, then He will help our lives to stay strong. If we disobey Jesus, though, our lives will crumble as bad as the foolish man's house. Listen carefully. This could change your life. Today we're beginning this brand new series, Questions, Questions, Questions. You know, Jesus asked a lot of very tough questions to people when He was on earth. And the purpose of those questions weren't to trick people or to confuse them. Instead, the purpose of those questions was to teach them very important things and make them really think about their lives and actions. The question we're learning from today is, Why do you call me Lord, but don't do what I say? Now, that's a tough question. Jesus is saying, Sure, you say that you love me and that you're my follower, but you don't even pay any attention to my commands. You just do whatever you want and then claim to love me and follow me. Well, here's what Jesus was saying. Want to know the best way to show God that you love Him? It's not by sending Him a card. It's not even by singing Him a worship song or telling Him, I love you. Those things are great and all, but they're not the best way to tell God that you love Him. Jesus told us how to tell God we love Him in our power verse today. He said, if you love me, obey my commandments. That's it. Obey him. That's the best way to show God that you love him. Too many people want to pick and choose the things in the Bible that they want to obey. They say, yes, I love God, but I'm not going to give him my money. That's just asking too much. Or they say, I love God, but I'm not going to obey his command to honor my father and mother. Sometimes I just want to be rude because my parents don't let me do the things that I want to do. Well, they may never say those words out loud, but their actions sure do communicate exactly that. God doesn't want us just to say that we love Him. 
We have to show that we love Him by obeying what He says. So how can we do that? After all, it's not very easy to obey sometimes. The only way that that will ever happen is if we choose to obey every single day. It won't just happen on its own. We have to make a conscious choice to obey God. You have to decide ahead of time that whatever happens today, I'm going to obey God. And if we wait until temptation comes to make the choice, we may make the wrong one. And that would break God's heart. So, every day you have to start off the day by saying, Today, I'm going to obey God. I love Him and I'm going to show my love for Him by following His commands. So, why is it so important to follow God's commands? Well, here's why. It's important because if you obey God's commands, you will make it through life's storms. Now, we've learned this through the life of Noah when we've been studying in Kids Creek lately. But remember what Jesus had to say about the two builders in our Bible story from today? The one who built his foundation on the rock, his house survived the storm. But the other builder, he lost his entire house when the storm came. The builder who built on the solid foundation represents those who hear God's words and obey them. When you obey God's commands, you're able to make it through life's storms. You know, life is full of storms. Sickness, pain, suffering, disappointment, and more. But if you want to make it through these tough times, you have to learn that what God's Word says and to follow His commands. And when you trust and obey God, your life is built on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. He will help you through life's toughest times. It's time for all of us to choose to obey God's commands. He wants what's best for us, and He will help us through the storms of life. So, let's check in with our good friend Skittles to see what he has to say about all this. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Ah yeah, what's up everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E S. Skittles in the his head, and I'm ready to tell you what's up today. We are talking about a big question that Jesus asked people. Why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I command? So every time today that somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. If I'm going to follow Jesus, got to do what he commands. You know, some people, they say they follow Jesus, but they don't do what he says. Well, now that is crazy. I know it. The best way to show Jesus that you love him is by doing what he says. So anytime, I mean anytime, if somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. If I'm gonna follow Jesus, gotta do what he commands. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles, out, bang, bang, yeah. Right now I've got some questions for you to see how well you were paying attention to today's lesson. Here we go. Whose questions are we studying in this series? Jesus. What kind of foundation did the wise man build his house upon in our Bible story today? He built on the rock. What kind of foundation did the foolish man build his house upon in our story today? He built on the sand. What happened to the foolish man's house when the storms came? It was destroyed. According to our lesson today, if you truly love God, you will blank His commandments. That's right, obey. According to our lesson today, we must blank to obey every single day. That's right, we have to choose to obey every single day. And according to our lesson today, if you obey God's commands, you will blank, blank, blank life's storms. That was a tricky one. If you obey God's commands, you will make it through life's storms. Great job with those questions. Now, let's spend some time together showing God just how much we love Him by singing Him a song.
With all my heart and soul With all my mind and strength So all the world will see So glad that you chose to join us again this week to help tackle one of the toughest questions Jesus asked. And I hope you'll join us again next time. So have an awesome week, and we'll see you next time at the creek. Kids Creek. <laughs>